With Heart Rhythm TV in Denver, Colorado, I'm Dan Ash again with the Ice Image of the Month. We are again joined by Dr. Abhishek Deshmukh of the Mayo Clinic. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Dan. Okay, so now we're going to switch gears here and talk a bit about the Eustachian Ridge, which can be very prominent and can impact your ability to manipulate the catheter and get good contact um, with the CTI region. So you talk a bit about a couple um, troubleshooting uh, methods that you have for a prominent eustachian ridge. And as you can see here in the image, as you've annotated very nicely, a prominent eustachian ridge. So I'm gonna let you comment on some of these techniques that you use. So first of all is identifying a prominent eustachian ridge. So if you're advancing a wire or any catheter from the IVC into the right atrium, if you suddenly feel some obstruction or the catheter or the wire is not going up straight to the SVC, then you may want to think that you're dealing with a prominent eustachian ridge. The other time it becomes quite apparent if the CS catheter has to bend down more towards the ventricle and then you have to do a very steep clock to get into the CS, that would again tell you that you have a eustachian, prominent eustachian ridge. The challenge is that if you're ablating uh, on your cavotracus pedisthemus and with a ridge, you know, some of the pointers would be when you try to clock the catheter, the catheter, instead of going septally, goes laterally. And if you try to counterclock the catheter, instead of going laterally, the catheter goes more septally. And that happens because of this fulcrum effect of the catheter uh, laying on the uh, prominent eustachian ridge. The second issue is that this eustachian ridge can also have some tissue which can uh, conduct electricity and kind of be an impediment for creating a, a, a bidirectional block across the cavotricus pedisthemus. So here again, intracardiac echo helps a lot to circumvent this and make sure that we are ablating in the area adjacent to the ridge and even on the ridge so that you know, we can get a block. Few ways by which this can be done is that you can kind of get your sheath and catheter high up and then bend the catheter down. Other options would be to get the sheath above the ridge and then bend the sheath and the catheter down uh, under ice so you know you're making good contact. But rarely you may also have to do this knuckleball technique where you kind of go around the eustachian ridge, make a tight curve, and then try to see if you can get contact. So this is an example where you're making kind of a loop around the cavotricuspid isthmus and then across the eustachian ridge and trying to get contact and then try to ablate. You know, um, you know, I, I love this name knuckleball. Um, I've never heard it called that, but I like it. You know, we used to call it the Michigan loop. Clearly that was wrong because everybody does it. But um, the knuckleball, um, you, know, it, you know, can you walk us through kind of, you know, how you make it uh, and what you do with it to kind of improve your contact with the prominent eustachian ridge? Great. So once you kind of identify that you have a ridge and you have to do the knuckleball, the main thing is to get the ablation kind of in the uh, uh, right atrium towards the tricuspid annulus, get the sheath up, then make a tight bend on the sheath and the catheter together. So you kind of are knuckled or make a tight curve across, then advance the whole assembly a little bit more ventricularly, and then drop the tip of the ablation catheter. So as we do that, it will land on the cavotricuspid isthmus, and obviously you confirm it looking at the intracardiac echo. Now on the image to the right, you have done the same thing, but it is not making any contact. So once you see that it is not making any contact, despite making this loop, then all you need to do is bring down the entire assembly down so that the catheter tip goes down, and then you can make a contact as you are seeing here on the cavotricuspid uh, isthmus, and then you can you know, ablate uh, through this. So one other point to make that if you ablate, it's not going to be like a linear ablation that as you can keep pulling back, you're going to complete the line. So if you want to ablate even more posterior to the point what you have ablated by making the loop, then you have to kind of undeflect, pull the whole thing down and make a curve again so that you're going more proximal or more inferior to the spot what you have ablated and then finish the line. This so is also very helpful when you are ablating on the ridge that as you deflect, undeflect, pull down, then you can complete the ablation on the ridge, and then you should hope to get a bidirectional block by that time. And so I heard you comment about deflectible sheets. So you're using a deflectible sheet in addition to the ablation catheter for all your CTIs or just in a, when you do it in combination with AFib? So generally, if I'm just doing a straight CTI, I would use like an uh, SRO sheet. 
but if it is happening after an AF ablation, then a steerable sheath, generally we would use it to do an AF ablation. So you can use that steerable sheath to kind of make these curves so that uh, you, know, you can have good contact while ablating. Well, thank you. Um, a great name and great uh, technique with the knuckleball. Great. So, um, and I think we'll we'll close this out here with a with a very final, a very nice final case here, an Epstein flutter with a uh, looks like a bioprosthetic valve, and you used ice to kind of maneuver and understand the anatomy better, and I'll let you comment on that. So this was an interesting patient with Epstein's who had a bioprosthetic valve, then had a valve in valve uh, procedure. And the patient was having incessant right atrial flutter, which appeared to be cavotrichus pedisthmus. But if you just ablate from the valve to the IVC, you will certainly ablate all the atrial myocardium. But there is also potential that this valve might be seated more atrially, and you may not be able to ablate all the atrial myocardium. So in that situation, you may actually have to cross the valve and then again make this tight bend or the loop of Michigan or knuckleball behind this valve so that you can find some atrial tissue as you are seeing it here. So now this ablation catheter is beyond the tricuspid valve, beyond the bioprosthetic valve, and then it is kind of tucked underneath that to see that atrial electrogram. And then, you know, ablation of that would, uh, you know, resulted in bidirectional block in this particular patient. So again, important to understand, uh, you know, concepts of regional anatomy, biophysics of ablation, and intracardiac echo, I think that would be key for success for this uh, not so easy ablations at some point. So just kind of to summarize what we've talked about. First off, we jokingly called it the Michigan Lib. We did not believe it. we were the only place doing it. Uh, second of all, um, you know, the cable tricuspidismus is a complex uh, anatomy and underappreciated. You know, oftentimes, you know, a single pass can get two type block, but if you're having trouble, you know, think about, you know, ridges, think about pouches, think about, um, a, you know, uh, small cardiac veins. And you very, very nicely summarized that. Um, I guess we're advocating for understanding the anatomy with ice that can be very helpful, not necessarily um, that you have to use it for every case, but understanding the course of the, uh, the right coronary artery, I think is very paramount. We've definitely seen reports, unfortunately, of inferior MIs associated with CTI uh, flutter ablation. Uh, but Abhishek, uh, I guess I'll ask you for any final comments and also thank you very much for joining us. No, great. Thanks a lot, Dan, for having me. But again, just as you highlighted the principles of imaging, biophysics, and electrogram analysis, you know, if you can integrate all that, your CTIS flutter should, you know, go seamlessly well. And I wish you the very best for all your flutter ablations. Thank you. Thanks a lot.